Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am the motorcycle rescuer and sometimes known as Charlie. Um real emotional roller coaster last couple of months with bikes. We've had the ER5 issues which are now resolved. Stunning bike. Um but still not quite selling yet. I'm gonna put it out after. Uh thirteen hundred pounds is spot on for that bike with that paintwork, with the bright work. Um, and I'm going to stick to it. Someone will buy it in the end. They will buy it, but it's a waiting game. And that, I, and that's not in any huge wor worry, hurry. He's not in a huge hurry, so there's no issues there at the moment. The um, ZL600 finally completed. Well, I say that completed to the best of my ability. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've done the best I can do on that bike. There's little bits, there's one little bit that needs doing, and that's that bottom seal. Um, and I don't know what it's called, but it's to do with the uh, shaft drive. And I just don't know shaft drives, guys. So that bike is MOT'd, rides beautifully, and ready to go home. But that little seal needs looking at. Um, and best bet for that is a mechanic who's done them before, an old mechanic. They'll know exactly what to buy and what to do there. And then it's uh, good as gold. Gary's bike, I'm going to take to MOT at some point. And today, I think I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the second ER5 over there, the, the parts bike. Because I've got some stupid inquiries about it. Um, I took a picture of it like it is with no bodywork, nothing on it. And I said, let me know if you need a part. And my God, the messages I've been getting. Someone wanted to put it in his trike. I was like, great, you can put it in your trike. And he goes, no, I need the lot and it needs to be working and running. And I said, well, haven't you read the ad? It, the engine's a good runner, you know, the engine works, but it lost spark. <clears throat> so you'd have to resolve that. And then yesterday's was quite funny. I put it up on our Facebook page, um, which, by the way, for anyone interested, is Motorcycle Rescuer and Jake Corb Parts. Um, and it, he was saying, he basically asked all the questions one by one. Does it have a key? Yes. Does it have a logbook? Yes. Does it have... Uh, can you put the bodywork back on? Yes. Will it ride me home? And I was like, are you an idiot? For 400 pounds, if it did all that, it wouldn't be 400 pounds. I'd be painting it or calf racing it and selling it for 1200 pounds. So uh, I think it's just, I, the truth is, I hate doing parts. I hate parts in bikes. I'm gonna piece that together as best as I can. I'm gonna throw it on eBay and sell it as a full bike, non-runner spares or repairs instead of parts. The truth is, it's probably worth more in parts. You might get seven or 800 out of that in parts. You'll probably get 400 out of it as a, as a whole non-running bike. But that's the game, guys, that's what we do. So let me pull that out and we'll have a, uh, we'll have a look at it. Look at this beauty. What a stunner. What an absolute stunner. Look at that exhaust. The paintwork. Well, hopefully it fires up first kick. I'm sure it will. Let's have a look. Wrong key. That's the tank key. It hasn't been started. It could be two weeks now. Whoa, what happened with the choke? That's super stiff. I thought I fixed that. Lucky enough. Doesn't need choke. So let it warm up. <clears throat> yeah, super stiff choke there, it won't, it won't, uh, I don't want to break anything, yeah, oh well, no choke needed, um, yeah, we'll just let it warm up, wow, what a bike, let me try and get these a little bit cleaner, I'll get some uh, metal cleaner on that, I'll get it a little bit cleaner, and uh, they'll be fine. What I did want to do originally was take the other ones and put them on here, but I have no idea how easy or difficult that is. Actually, it looks like there's two screws there, look. It, is it as simple as dropping that, taking them two screws off? Can it drop? It can't be. It would be nice to do the, to switch it over though. But do you know what? It's fine. What a nice bike. Yeah, 
Lovely. Uh, one thing I did want to do is I wanted to adjust the clutch. Oh, it looks like I've done it already. Yeah, it wouldn't be that far in if I hadn't done it already. That's the fine tuning. Cool. That's the beauty. Now let's get out the other one. And the plan for the other one is exactly what I said. I just want to make it look more like a bike. So I will put it out and I'll start throwing its parts back on. I'll, I'll throw them on securely. Um, but no matter how secure they are, no one's riding that bike home. It has no spark. So uh, what do we need to do to make this a little bit more attractive to potential part buyers? Because it's still a parts bike. Um, we can put the side casing back on and I will put the stator back in because I believe it's working and fine. Remember, that engine had high compression, consistent compression. It was very high actually, if I remember rightly. So that was all good. Um, also, it had intermittent spark, guys. It didn't have no spark. Sometimes it would start. That's where we received most of our issues, you see. I, I kind of got it running, sent it to Nat. It stopped running. I got it running again, sent it to Nat. It stopped running. It had intermittent spark, which is what has been the problem with this bike. And if I could find that. And to be fair, we've tried coils. We've tried the ECU. We've tried a second stator, but it's a second second-hand stator. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not, you know, that it's right. It might not be. Um, now, we have a stator over there, and it would be pretty cool to switch that across and see it. But I think it's wiring. I think it's wiring. I think you'd need a new, a full new harness for this and an ignition switch, an original ignition switch with the... Um, with the diode in it what, what's it called the resistor uh but anyway let's um so side panel is one of the first things i need to put on i'll put that in properly and then it will be kind of bits and pieces i, I see the front caliper isn't on so if i can find that i'll throw that on because it was a working one uh and then obviously i've got all the side panels and tanks and everything else for it let's just make it look like a bike so that whoever's buying it for spares or repairs um, has more to work with. So, uh, so that's back on and in. Um, I was just thinking to myself, could you imagine if Spark was back? <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know if I've got enough juice to have a look. Could you imagine? Did I see a Spark? I didn't see a spark. Did I see a spark? Did that spark? I didn't see a spark. What the hell? I swear. I feel like I saw another spark. What the hell? Oh, it can't be. Oh, uh, it's pouring down. Of course it's pouring down. Why wouldn't it be? And I'm stupid enough to have set up an external bottle. Bottle? Fuel tank. Um... And I've rewired the coils. I've even taken the coil lead cap off the Kawasaki just to test it. And if this bike loves me, it will not fire up. If it hates me, we'll hear this thing run. There's no way in hell it's going to run. I didn't test spark plug on the other side. Um, but let's. I'm going to throw some fuel in just for shits and giggles really. Excuse my language. This isn't Nat Snacker's yard. <laughs> um, and if it fires, I, I swear, I don't know. I I could eat my hat. Okay, we got fuel in there. That's fuel to clear, unleaded. Um, I, I mean, I've joked. I do not expect it to fire up. Genuinely don't. Because the carbs will be gunked up and stuff. And because it's the same bike that's been causing us issues for months. But this bloody bike, you never know. Here's the button, choke is on. I 
I could kill someone. I could kill someone. Guys, this is the Parts Kawasaki ER500. The bike that should not run with no exhaust on it granted. The Parts Kawasaki. I don't know if I'm ecstatic or angry. So yes, welcome back. Um, in the last video, you saw me messing around with this thing and I put some power and fuel to it. Um, honestly, just out of curiosity and to be a bit silly. And it bloody sparked. Now, to clarify, this bike's always had an intermittent spark issue, okay? The um, CDI ECU has been swapped, it, same issue. Coils have been swapped, same issue. Stator has been swapped, same issue. Blah, blah, blah. It's been done. Um, then I did some sort of dodgy bridging with wires in regards to the, uh, the switch. The ignition could have one of them... Uh, what resistors in it that's going bad that that was one possibility it still is one possibility um because the stator i didn't change it is the same stator in there i've changed the, the side casing because i wanted the shiny one on goldie over there but um i kept the stator it was hanging there still attached um and honestly guys when i, I chucked it in i'm like i chucked it in um so it's all a bit confusing i i hardly I just chucked it in with no care, I hardly talked it down. I mean, I did, of course I did, but I didn't expect it to be okay. But currently it appears to have spark, which is, I, I, I don't know, I'm shocked. Now, technically, this bike has an MOT for a year, because it was MOT'd, it was in good nick. And I've got a logbook, and frankly, the charity is skint, absolutely skint. That's why I wanted to throw it back together originally, put its panels on, get it good-ish, and then, you know, think about um, selling it for parts, spares or repairs, but as a better looking, more, you know, bike. Because at the moment, I put the pick drop like this and people were taking the mick. Um, and now I'm thinking that because I'm unsure of the intermittent fault, I'm going to, of course, test it over the next couple of weeks fully. Both me and that know how this works. It seems okay for a day or two. It's normally the third, fourth or fifth day it stops. So I'll keep it here for at least a week. And, and I will know if it's intermittent. There was, there was obvious signs, I can't, you know, that it was intermittent. Um, and then it will just stop running. So that's kind of that part really. So my aim, I think, is to, to throw this back together, polish the turd, and sell it at a reasonable price. I'm I'm thinking six six fifty. So it's kind of in between spares or repairs, and it it'll it'll, it'll be a running riding MOT do a upper. That's kind of what I've got in my head. Yeah, but of course it will be road legal and safe. So my plan for today is to look over what I've left off. So I have no front caliper. I've got a slight oil leak there because I haven't talked that down. Um, I know I took one of the coolant hoses off here, so I need a coolant hose here to here, but I have, I have the original, or I might have some spares. Not the original, as in the one I took off, I think I can trim down slightly, that's here somewhere. Um, and then, the tank is here, the panels are here, I'll top the coolant up when I've re, you know, hosed that. Uh, I believe I took the horn to put on Gary's bike, that's easy, that's a plug and play part. I needed one spark plug cap, I've ordered that, that's coming because the Kawasaki said L needs it as well. And what we could end up with here is a, a running, riding, slightly touchy-ish bike. That's the best I can describe it. So what's the first step for me? First step for me is I need to get all the bolts on this plate here. Because look, you can see it's, it's dripping oil. Um, 
and uh, I only chucked it on because again this was a parts bike I wasn't I wasn't even thinking uh, and I don't I'm not playing in there anymore in case I've nudged something for the good so I'm not playing in there anymore that's it I'm leaving it alone because I was tempted to take it off and paint it but I'm not but I am gonna of course um, go and get some uh, all the screws chalk it down and uh, get it sealed for oil so that's my step one so here we are. Um, I didn't want to mess with the stator that much, but um, it needed cleaning. I had to clean the the gaskets. Haven't actually got a gasket for this, but I've got a gasket sealer. I've got one other cover in there that might have a oh, come on, that might have a gasket on it, but um, I doubt it. I'll go and have a look. Uh, otherwise, I've got gasket sealer, haven't I? I'll just use that. Uh, that stuff works perfectly, guys. You just got to let it set for a few hours. So you torque it down close to fully spec, and then you let it set for a few hours, and then you fully torque it. Um, and that's how you get the best out of gasket maker. Uh, what I don't want to be known for is someone who bodges bikes together, sells them on cheap. So I wouldn't let that go out with its oil leak. It would, it would wind me up, and it wouldn't be fair on others. So um, like I said, this bike will be as safe as I can get it. Um, and it'll be sold as a cheap doer upper for someone else, but it will be an on the road potentially runner rider doer upper as long as it keeps starting and uh, rides basically because I, I don't know what this bike's capable of anymore. Right, let me um, let me finish this side part and then we'll look at the other few bits that we're we need to do but by the end of today we could technically have a bike that looks like a bike and starts technically so guys when you're using gasket maker like this it has to be oil and petrol resistant I like the um, Loctite black um, you'll always get different advice as to how to use this you like get different advice as to how much you put on basically you need a smidgen around like that and then you talk it down close to full spec wait kind of 12 hours and then you give it its kind of final nip and what happens is it solidifies under there and then you're taking the air out by giving it its last nip so uh, that's how I use it that's how I'll continue to use it although I do believe on the pack itself now it says just to talk down to full spec immediately so I don't know uh, I'm gonna double check that anyway out of my own curiosity I was just thinking, I've got my Motorcycle Rescuer t-shirts now guys, I'm very pleased, they're stunning. Um, if anyone wants one, you have to message me and ask me what I've got left, because I only ordered 20, I actually ordered 15, and they sent me 20. Um, I've got one double XL left only in grey, but it's stunning. Uh, maybe three larges, maybe three extra larges, maybe three or three mediums actually. Um, so let me know if you want one, they're 20 quid each, I know it's a little bit pricey guys, but that includes me posting it. Um, basically I don't make, I'm not making any money out of this, it's just, it's cool, it's t-shirts that say Motorcycle Rescuer, that's all. Um, I, I'm always happy to pay 20 quid for a t-shirt, a one-off t-shirt. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm going to put something up so that you get to see the t-shirts, if you want one message me down below and uh, we'll work out how to do that. But basically it's PayPal, you put the money in the PayPal, you write your name and address, and then you write to me in the comment section or on Facebook and you say I've paid, and then I package it up and send it out to you. Okay, guys, welcome to my channel. Now the um, t-shirts are in, and they are brilliant. I've got a choice of two colors at the moment. We've got a gray, a really cool dark gray, because let's be honest, if you're doing mechanic work, you want to be dark. And we've got a black. Um, we've got two, two X larges, which I believe are already sold. Sophie and George. Um, a few mediums. A few large. One, two, three, four, five, six extra large. Two of them are gone, I believe. Uh, Daniel and John. Just confirm with me, guys. And uh, the rest are available. So let me know. These are the designs. I love them. I am a very minimalist person. And that, for me, is stunning. That ticks all of the boxes. You've got the Motorcycle Rescue logo there, logo there and on the sleeve, Motorcycle Rescue at YouTube. I am um, so pleased. So pleased. Uh, I'm going to show you the company. The company are called... 
personalised poppy, and you'll see them on Instagram. Uh, this young lady is willing to create your own t-shirts for your own channel, guys. Um, she does them at a fairly reasonable price if you're um, selling them on. Uh, you can make a couple of pound of each, but, you know, we're not doing it for um, money. We're doing it for to support local businesses. She's a local business. And also, I just, I love these. I love these. My logo is going to be out there and people are going to be wearing them. So anyone who's interested in a t-shirt, let me know. It's going to be quite simple. It's going to be the same as if you would order a keyring. You would write to me somewhere, either Instagram, Facebook, or um, in the comment section. And you would click on my PayPal. You'd pay the £20 each t-shirt, no matter what the size is, £20. That includes delivery. And you put your name and address in the PayPal bar. And I'll get these sent to you ASAP. Uh, so pleased I'm going to get one mounted, I'm going to get some sort of um, frame and I'm going to put one on the wall because I just love them.